Hello, this is Deborah Cohen, a story and a song, which is broadcast every Sunday, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time on YouTube. The handle is at Jewish Rock Music and on Instagram. The handle is DebraCohenMusic.com. Today's topic and question is, why do some rabbis sing in baby talk? If this interests you, then I'll be right back after this brief message. Hello, this is Deborah Cohen, Deborah Cohen Music, and I'm so glad that you took the time to listen to my podcast, A Story and a Song. It's about my life to share some wisdom and some mistakes, hopefully that we can learn from together and laugh at maybe, starting in the 80s in a new wave rock band in Boston with two singles that are still available on Spotify. Boston Nights and Dreamin'. And then on my worldly journey that we're all on, I morphed into a spiritually dominant being where I am a truth seeker and write songs of praise while having one foot in the world writing sync music. So listen up and share. And this is Deborah Cohen, and I thank you. I see that we already have some people on Instagram. Zoran362 joined us, and uh, YouTube chat is open as well. So today we're talking about some rabbis that I've heard during a Shabbat service in particular. They start singing like da da dee 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 da 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 da. So some people call that baby talk. And why do they do that? And what are we in the congregation supposed to do when he's he or she's doing that? So if that interests you, that's what we're going to be talking about today. And the article that I'm going to share today is from Chabad. So take notes because, you know, Chabad is full of mystical information. Now, that baby talk that I mentioned, da-da, dee, 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 is a wordless melody, actually, that you'll see or hear in a congregation. It is called a nigun, N-I-G-U-N, or plural, N-I-G-U-N-I-M, nigunim. It is a song of the Kabbalistic Hasidic tradition, generally without words, considered a path to higher consciousness and transformation of being. So, We've already learned that it is a tradition in Judaism, specifically Kabbalistic and Hasidic traditions, and that it's an experience. It's not just reading words on a page. It's actually coming from a higher place because you're not reading these nigunim, usually, unless you're learning them. They're coming from your heart or your soul. And thank you, Adrasup27, for joining. Here is a quote from Rabbi Shneer Zalman of Liadi. If words are the pen of the heart, then song is the pen of the soul. Think about that. The soul's pen, however, writes in the opposite direction from the heart's. Think about that for another moment. While words carry meaning downward from God's own primal consciousness into the minds of sages and the lips of prophets to inscribe them upon human hearts, song carries the soul upwards to be absorbed within the infinite light. Yes. So it's a two-way street, so to speak, when you're singing in praise to God or davening. But when you're singing nigunim, you are singing to the infinite light, the Ein Sof, the God within us, the Creator, and connecting at a higher level. So it takes kavanah, 
which is intention. It takes understanding, which is why we're talking about this today. It takes courage to be able to do it in a mixed congregation where maybe a lot of people don't engage or they just leave it up to the rabbi, which is usually what I see. The rabbi's up there doing his or her baby talk thing and everybody's just listening. That's not what nigunim is. Nigunim are meant to be participatory. So we have to understand the basics before we can have the courage to try it ourselves, especially if there's a critical voice nearby that says, what's with this baby talk? Why are you singing like that? Sound familiar? Nigunim generally have no words. Words limit and define, but the nigun tears the soul beyond all bounds, beyond words. A tzaddik, or a righteous person, is one who has mastered the animal inside. We all have an animal soul within. Stay with me if this is new to you. An animal soul inside and achieves a higher state of being. So in general terms or explanation, and this could go for Christians as well, they're supposed to be in control of their body and to walk in the spirit and truth, right? So a sadiq, a, a Jewish soul, has mastered the animal inside. So in other words, your eyes, first of all, if you're a man, are disciplined. It's really hard during the summertime, I imagine, because a man is can be controlled by his eye gate. So you have to control your gaze. And if you're on the beach, I mean, there's plenty of TNA out there. So how do you stop looking at it without hope? If you've gone into lust mode and you start getting excited looking at women's body parts, you know, then you probably need to be spending more time in God's word or less time at the beach <laughs> or get a, get a bigger umbrella so you can't see what's walking by. I really feel sorry for this generation because it's anything goes. It's really sad. Okay, so a sadiq person has, has a grip on their eyes and their minds as well. You have to control your mind, mind control, meaning... I don't think there's any human being on this planet that can stop, like, dirty thoughts from coming in, let's say. Nasty, sexual, inappropriate thoughts. Especially if you watch American TV. It's, it, you, are, you become brainwashed and you become at a lower level spiritually if you watch schmutz. schmutz. That's what it is, schmutz. Entertainment disguised as schmutz. Uh, so what you need to do is, is, it's hard to do, spend more time watching quality program or, you know, before I got married, I didn't even watch any TV because I didn't want to expose myself to violence and sexual conduct and oh, it's just terrible. That's what we call entertainment nowadays in this world. So you have to control what you see and also what you think. So if a negative thought, even jealousy is another one that comes through while you're trying to pray or whatever, sometimes errands or things you forgot to do will come through your mind when you're trying to pray or sing or focus on God, Kavanaugh. So, you know, at, the, at first when I was practicing this like a decade ago, I had a notepad next to me. And when I re remembered something I had to do, I just quickly grabbed my pen, wrote it down, and then went back to what I was doing. Now, I wasn't intentionally sitting there to make a shopping list, but uh, what I'm saying is sometimes when you're trying to concentrate on prayer, these other thoughts come into your mind. If it's a sexual thought or something somebody said or a jealous feeling or whatever, don't entertain it. Just let it blow by and override it with a scripture or a psalm and say the psalm or scripture out loud because it takes 10 good thoughts to cancel one negative thought. 
So that's why it's called Kavana is exertion. You have to intentionally fight. You have to fight your own mind sometimes. But there will come a time if you keep doing that where you will have peace of mind. You will have the Shalom of Hashem. And you will be able to focus without interruption, davening on the Word of God. It's an amazing place to be. And that's why we're talking about this, because it's possible for anybody looking to get closer to God. So your goal is to become a Sadiq soul. And from there, come to union with the light that a Sadiq has found, which means if you have a rabbi that is up there in the service singing what seems to be baby talk, that, that an animal soul will, will perceive it as baby talk because they have no understanding. But as you start to study this wordless way of singing to God, you will glean spiritual enlightenment. And when you sing with the rabbi, you glean the righteousness of that soul. And even further, when you sing a nigun from a sage of the past, you will also plug into the sadiq soul of the past, which is phenomenal. And it brings you to a higher elevation of praise where you no longer need to sing the popular songs that everybody else is singing. You revert to wordless melodies because... It's now no longer just your mind singing from a memorized song, but your heart, pure singing to Hashem in a nigun. This is why each note and nuance of a nigun must be precise when you're singing, singing a nigun from a sage from tradition, from our tradition. As the words of a sacred text, they must be learned at first and repeated in perfect form because the sadiq's mind and soul are held within them so there's a learning curve when you're getting to the point of the ein sof the higher level of the sefirot let's say you have to practice like anything else you're not born with the ability to do this it has to be learned the parts of the nigun are called gates, G-A-T-E-S. They are entrances from one spiritual world to a higher one. So as you experience with practice the elevation of the soul, which is actually a tangible feeling, you can realize that you're going through gates in the heavens. Now, some of you might be saying, whoa, what's she smoking? But no, I'm telling you, this is the higher level of praise that is available to every one of us if we take the time to learn, to practice, to understand, and to be in, uh, let's see, if you're learning, you want to learn from a Sadiq soul, not somebody that's uh, on Star Search or Rockstar. They're, they're the animal soul. You have to know the difference between an animal soul and and the spiritual, the Sadiq soul. Hopefully your rabbi has a Sadiq soul. This And this is why when you're learning, a nigun must never be rushed. Welcome Isaac and Rubenstein. We're talking about nigunim today and how it's available to every one of us if we learn the steps. According to this article in Chabad and according to my own experience, singing nigun okay the pace of a nigun the silence the mindfulness all must be preserved in order that the nigun reaches deep inside so in the beginning if you're learning how to sing with the rabbi a nigun you may be thinking let's get on with it you know <laughs> i've heard people say that are new to this kind of soul singing why is the rabbi singing so slowly? Ah, you don't understand. It has to be slow to permeate into the heart, the soul. You're not just singing a song to tempo, that's, but you are learning a song, let's say, from a rabbi of the past. It's got to be intentional. It's got to be heartfelt. 
It's wordless, usually with just syllable sounding. Some people say it's baby talk, but you'll find it, it like bubbles up out of your soul when you've opened up that gate through Kavanah intention and practice. So obviously you have to be around people that understand what you're doing or they're going to say the same thing that they're saying about the rabbi. What's with this baby talk that you're singing? Did you forget the words? That's usually what they say because those people don't yet understand. The Holy Rebbe Rabbi Yosef Yitzhak of Lubavitch taught, quote, A nigun opens windows in the soul. First, there must be deep contemplation, focusing the mind upon the oneness of the cosmos and its creator. To see that unity within each thing until it becomes more real than even your sense of self. So while you're practicing this, and again, I'm speaking from experience, that's how I can share this with you. You can't be self-conscious. You're trying to achieve a, an awareness of the cosmos beyond the four walls that you're standing in and aware of the Ein Sof, the light, Hashem. But the contemplation may remain frozen in the realm of cold intellect, meaning if you cannot get out of your own mind, then you have to press through that glass ceiling, so they say. It might not happen the first few times. But when it does happen that you expand your song beyond the room that you're in and the people that you're with, whoa, all I can say is it's wordless. But your heart will sing and you'll feel it'll change you. It's a transformation. With a nigun, what is held imprisoned deep in the soul pours down into the mind and from the mind to the heart, meditation may enlighten the intellect, but a nigun can uplift and transform all of your being. All of your being. It's like when I was singing with my rabbi at the Bima not too long ago. He was singing Nishmat Kol Chai. It was a glorious feeling as we stood side by side. I don't know what she was feeling, but she shared with me afterwards she said, something happened when I was singing that song, Nigun. Nish, of course, this has words, right? Da, as you say, Nishmat kol chai, tiverech ad et shimcha, Adonai, Eloheinu. And then you go and do Dai 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 Da Da Dai 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 Die, 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 And repeating it over and over. That is why the ancient prophets would sing and play musical instruments as they awaited the gift of prophecy. You're expecting something as you're singing your nigun. You're not just singing because you're singing. You're expecting something to happen. In this way, they would strip themselves of the barriers of body and mind, opening themselves as channels of the infinite light, the Ein Sof, Hashem. Not for the sake of transcendence alone, but to draw that transcendence from the Ein Sof, down to earth to awaken the hearts of humankind to the inner truths of life on earth. Ah. 
song, wrote the second Rebbe of Chabad, Rabbi Dov Bear, lies at the core of life. Its source is the most supernal ecstasy, and I can vouch for that. I experience it once, and I want to experience it again. And sometimes I have to sing loud in the congregation without making them confused. No, I want them to join me. So it requires teaching. You have to explain to somebody that's like, why are you like, seem to be in bliss when you're singing? What's going on with you? <laughs> I actually even had a person behind me ask me, are you on drugs? I'm like, what? <laughs> does, does She doesn't understand what's going on when you're singing in a higher level. It's a quote from the Torah. Before we read the Torah, we pray. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam asher kitshanu b'mitzvotah v'tivanu la'asok b'divrei Torah. This is from Genesis 2.10. A river went out from Eden to water the garden. Let's, I'll say that again in case I caught you by surprise. A river went out from Eden to water the garden. From the source of all delight, the river of life flows downward, branching outward to each world and each created being. Each thing thirsts to rejoin with the source above. And from that yearning comes its song. And with that song comes, it comes alive. That's what I'm talking about. Even just doing that little Nishma Kol Chai song, all of a sudden, I feel, I feel more animated. It's life, spiritual life. To get rid of that crusty outer shell that comes from the nine to five job, or you're feeling like in your world you're on a hamster wheel, get out the nigun, find your favorite rabbi's song, learn it, and then bust a gut and sing with all your heart and see how you come alive. The heavens sing, the sun, the planets, and the moon. Each animal, each plant, each rock has its particular song according to how it receives life. Thank you for joining me on YouTube, Shop de Terre. Until the entire cosmos pulsates with a symphony of countless angels and souls and animals and plants and even every drop of water and molecule of air singing the song that gives it life. Have you experienced that kind of singing? That song that is built into every human heart? to express in a nigun. But you must find a rabbi that teaches this kind of singing so that you can practice it with the rabbi first and then join the congregation and practice spreading this life, soul, song. I hope that your rabbi has an opportunity for you to practice singing nigunim from the bima. They start this kind of wordless singing and invite you in. But if you don't understand what that rabbi is doing, or the rabbi hasn't explained what's going on, then you think the rabbi is the only one that can sing like that. And that's not true. It's for all of us. I just read it to you. The entire cosmos pulsates with a symphony of countless angels and souls and animals and plants and even every drop of water and molecule of air singing the song that gives it life. This is why a nigun brings a surge of new life and healing, sweetens the bitter soul, fills a home with light, like the song sung by David for King Saul, which healed his bitter spirit. Do you know that King David had an instrument with him and Saul would summon him because he was depressed and David would come with his voice and his instrument and sing to God this way? And Saul was lifted up from his oppression so that you know 
when you sing from your heart this way, you can affect other people that are down in the dumps and help them to come out of their funk. A song is oneness. A song turns around upon itself in a circle. It's oneness, a circle of oneness, until there is no beginning or end. And as the Rebbe Menachman Mendel Schneerson taught, a song unites those who sing and hear it. When words are spoken, we each hear the words according to our understanding. But in song, we are all united in a single pulse and a single melody of bliss. That is why it is said, all the world will sing a new song in the messianic era coming very soon upon us, a song of the essential oneness expressed throughout our world. And that article is written by Tzvi Freeman on Chabad. So I encourage you to look up Chabad.org. If you've never heard this teaching before, then go to Chabad.org and find out about Nigunim, N-I-G-U-N-I-M, or a Nigun. Learn how to sing Nigun. Find a rabbi in your area, or if you don't have one, Go on YouTube and find rabbis that sing Nigunim. Or go to, let's say, the Nigun that I sang is from Rabbi Joey Weisenberg. And that song, that melody that I sang is Nishmat Kol Chai. Okay, so to wrap it up, we have a new moon holiday coming this Thursday night, I believe it is. Rosh Kodesh. Sivan. And why is that so special, you may ask? Okay, let me spell it while I'm looking for it, because some of you might not know. S-I-V is in Victor, A-N, Sivan. In the third month after the exodus of the Jewish people from Egypt, on that very day, they came to the desert of Sinai, or if you say it in English, Sinai. That's in Shemot 19.1. Okay. I'm going to share a little excerpt of understanding about this new moon coming up. And I'll close with the traditional Psalm 104 that I recorded, which hopefully is shared in your synagogue or church every new moon, because it is a feast that God asked us to remember every month, the new moon. Jewish tradition says that, that, quote, that very day, end quote, refers to Rosh Kodesh Sivan. About that day it is written, quote, and the people of Israel encamped there opposite the mountain, end quote. The verb written in Hebrew for encamped is vayechan, a singular rather than plural form. This is to indicate that the acceptance of the Torah by the Jewish people was as if with a single mind and a single heart. This was necessary because the Torah was like a marriage contract between God and Israel, and as such there was no room for any hesitation or disloyalty between the parties. So let me just say... Same, same it is with the nigun. When you get to that point of understanding and experience to sing that kind of a wordless song so that you are aware of the cosmos, aware of unity, that there is no division in the camp, then you have achieved what pleases God most for all of God's children to stand at Mount Sinai, every Rosh Kodesh Sivan, receive your enlightenment of Torah for that year, because we were all standing there, those that were physically there, and us that followed in every generation were there, the soul, and we receive enlightenment from the Holy One. And notice that it says in that teaching, there was no disloyalty between the people in the tribes. 
So that rules out democracy for the Messianic state of Israel. The Constitution will be the Torah, and it will be acknowledged by all. So let me close with Psalm 104, and if you want to stay in your meditation and practice your nigun while you listen with understanding of Psalm 104. Shalom to your home. Hello, this is indie artist and now new author, Deborah Cohen, DBA, Deborah Cohen Music.com, with a new book, Jewish Palestine, Arab Palestine, A History of Conflict. For those of you that are sitting on the fence about Palestine, maybe you don't know what happened with the land disbursement in the 20th century when Palestine used to be. British Palestine, then this book is for you. Just look for the book and the author, me, Deborah Cohen, and have a Bible study with it. Share with your friends. It's the talk of today. Palestinians, Israelis, the conflict, how it began on my book, Jewish Palestine, Arab Palestine, a history of conflict.